Hello, my name is Richard Martin, and I'm here today to talk to Tony Gray about the future of LT and Tetra. Yes, thank you, Richard. Well, I'm called Tony Gray, and I work for a company called P3 Communications, who kindly sponsor me to not only be a board member of the Tetra and Critical Communications Association, uh, but also uh, I have the great honour to be the current chairman of the Critical Communications Broadband Group, which becomes yet another dreadful acronym, the CCBG. Tetra has been and continues to be the de facto standard for critical communications in uh, the public safety and, and other worlds that require the types of features and facilities that Tetra has. But the world's moving forward, particularly broadband is the coming capability and the coming requirement uh, for a lot of our users. So the, the premise of the CCBG was to look at how to drive the development of the standards, the technologies for critical communications in a broadband world. Does that mean that the association is moving away from focusing on Tetra? Absolutely not, no, and uh, as you know, and as, as the Tetra community knows, first of all, Tetra was a, a decade or so in the development and in the standardization, and then in the subsequent decade or so, it's been building its market and has become the de facto world standard for critical communications, particularly voice and narrowband data. And that's going to continue for the, at least the foreseeable future, in some considerable time. So broadband for critical communications, and particularly the public safety and other users who have to have reliable, resilient, capable uh, facilities in their communications, is just not there today. And, and Tetra is, as I say, the, the de facto standard that will be there for the foreseeable future to deliver those kinds of services but we can't stand still we have to look at how to develop the standards how to bring the technology hopefully to fruition and not only that but also to find uh, for example the spectrum in which to operate broadband capabilities for the future um, so no absolutely not tetra is not being de-emphasized or, or ignored in any way shape or form but we can't stand still. So you see a clear future for Tetra as a public safety communication system? There are more than three million Tetra terminals in use right now today around the world and in the last year more Tetra was sold than in any other previous year which even beat the record of the year before. So absolutely there is, there is plenty of life in Tetra and, and plenty of requirement for Tetra. So as I say, we need to be working in the background as to what the future standards, the future spectrum availability and the future justification for broadband facilities are. But Tetra is here for, with us for a very long time. So how would you see Tetra and LTE working together? Well, first and foremost, we need to get the capabilities in the standard for LTE that will enable it to deliver the sorts of features that Tetra has. We, we envisage uh, an evolution rather than a revolution where, as I was saying, for the short term, at least, Tetra is the only game in town. Um, and in the meantime, we can be working on the standardization. We can be looking for the spectrum into which to operate these, these kinds of future uh, networks and, and services. So what would you say has to be added to LTE to make it compatible with the needs of mission critical users? Well for example as you and all our Tetra users out there know uh, critical communications relies very much on group working so it's one-to-many and all informed networks not one-to-one -one calls as you would typically expect in a commercial cellular operation. Um, so we have to get that capability of, of group working, which is just not currently part of the LTE standard. Another aspect that uh, we've been working in the standards bodies on is what we talk about in the Tetra world as direct mode. 
So device to device outside of the network coverage, still being able to make calls and, and receive calls within radio range of, of your group of, of co-workers. Uh, again, if you have no bars on an LTE phone, you have no service. And so again, we need that built in, that direct mode capability built into the, uh, to the LTE standard. And the 3GPP standardization body refers to that as proximity services. So what success has the CCBG had in working with the standards bodies? Well, pretty successful, thanks so far to a lot of work from uh, very many people and not just the CCBG, we're working with a lot of other stakeholder organisations, uh, particularly in the US and in other parts of the world who all have very similar requirements for critical comms LTE for the future. The key question is this, can a customer buy Tetra today with confidence knowing that it'll meet their needs and that it's a good investment? Absolutely, and uh, I say this to all of our consulting clients that first and foremost, you can't get anything else on the market today that will deliver the capabilities and the features and facilities of Tetra. And secondly, as you've been hearing, we are working hard with the standards bodies to try to make sure that in the future, LTE can deliver critical communications capabilities. Um, and thirdly, a lot of the manufacturers and the industry out there are now working hard to make sure that they incorporate LTE capabilities for the future in their Tetra infrastructures and user equipment. So the bottom line is Tetra today is still as good an investment as it ever has been.